Hi, so this is something I've just put together. Um, it was an attempt to kind of create more diversity in my teak coaches. This isn't really a tutorial, but I thought it might be helpful to people to just show what I did here. So the, the aim of the project was to create a, um, a full break coach. Obviously there are really nice um, Hornby ones that you can get, but they're pretty expensive and not very easily available right now. There's also, you can get metal sides that you can put together but again those um, require either a chassis or you need a, a donor one of the, the nice Hornby ones to, to fit them so I wanted to make something that was a bit kind of cheaper and easier and didn't require um, a lot of expense so this is based on um, a standard Hornby railroad teak chassis and roof the kind that you can get um, pretty much anywhere I got this one for about £10 second hand, so really pretty cheap. In terms of converting it to a brake coach, I started work in Blender, which is a 3D modelling software, but it's completely free. I just modelled the sides in there, and these are, are not kind of based on any real prototype. Um, they're sort of based on the, the Hornby Teak full brake, but scaled to fit on the railroad chassis so they're smaller they're not accurate um, but they do match up reasonably well with um, with the old Hornby ones. 3D printing kind of isn't the ideal way to make something like this it has to be said so I have a resin 3D printer which is very nice but it it's not ideal for this kind of project uh, for a couple of reasons. These are are kind of long flat things so they print out fairly straightforwardly you can just lay them flat on the, f the print bed and they'll print really quickly it's broken up into pieces because the print is quite small so I've tried to keep the um, the joins along kind of door edges so they're not too visible in the final thing the problem with resin for this sort of job is that it does tend to warp a bit so when you see the um, the printed versions you can see that they're a bit kind of curled up so I tried to do a few things to mitigate this one was when I was curing them under UV light I put them between two pieces of glass to try and keep them flat um, another was that once they were properly cured I braced them from behind using um, thick styrene to try and keep them relatively flat um, I also put kind of cross braces across to keep them at the right distance apart and stop them bowing in or out the, the full brake is good for this because you can't see too much of the interior so you can't see that there's um, big bracing pieces going across. It'd be more difficult if you're trying to make one that actually has a lot of windows um, but it wouldn't be impossible, you could definitely do it. When you put the cross braces across it's important to not put them right at the bottom because the sides do need to kind of overlap the chassis a little bit. You need a bit of um, space there and I actually did have to trim the the reinforcements a little bit just to get it all to fit. So I've shared the files for these on Thingiverse, I'll put a link in the description. When you see mine you'll see that the sides are actually a little bit too tall. They're about one millimeter too tall I think, um, which means that the roof um, sits a little bit too high and it was difficult to clip the body back onto the chassis. I've adjusted the, um, the files before I shared them so they should fit better now. As I said, these are in several pieces and you have to join them together. I used 5-minute um, epoxy for that, um, Haraldite, I think, and then used uh, just a, a normal kind of model putty filler to fill in the gaps. You'll also see, if you look at these, that um, some of the beading is quite worn away. This is one of the problems, again, with the 3D printing. You've got to sort of scrub it to get the, the excess resin off and then as I said, I put it between two pieces of glass when I was curing it, and because the beading is so fine, that can kind of rub away at it and create some problems. So once it's cured, it seems to be fine, but particularly when it's just come out of the printer and it's still slightly soft, um, you do need to be quite careful with it, because I had to have a, a few attempts even to get one this good. It's, it's very easy to um, dislodge parts of that beading, although once it's painted it's not not too noticeable in the final thing. So in order to prepare the donor coach what I did was used a razor saw and a dremel 
to remove all of the existing sides. Um, obviously the end pieces just slide off and you want to keep those. You also want to keep the end bits that those slot onto, the bits that clip into the bottom of the chassis, because you do need something to stick your, your new sides onto. In terms of sticking on the sides, I, I started at one side first and waited for that to dry before I tried to glue it to the other side the other end of the coach and then to get it um, glued to the roof along the length and that's again because the um, the 3D printed sides tend to warp if you try and do it in one go it'll just keep pulling off at one end or the other so it's much better to um, get it all glued on at one end and then try and straighten it out later and I glued it both to the the interior um, end bits that's the slot into the chassis and then I also slotted on the the original end covers and glued everything together there and that's the kind of the end result that you get um, I've painted the 3d printed sides here um, but not the um, the original bits obviously you can see there's a little bit of damage to the roof um, on the, the rail along the side and up right on the corner there that happened when I was trying to um, clean it up in the corner with the Dremel but I used some Milliput and filled that back in and it isn't too noticeable on the final thing. When you've kind of got everything glued together you probably will need to do a lot of gap filling just to get it all nice and then try and sand those back as much as you can while also again being very careful of the beading. Also at this stage I used um, some little snips just to get rid of some of the roof vents um, because uh, the brake coach doesn't have all of these along the length. For the donor coach I picked one of the standard um, composite coaches rather than a, a brake end coach because they have the um, the vents right along the length rather than just kind of halfway along so it's easier to snip them off um, where you want them. Obviously again if you're particularly fussed about having very nice vents you could probably get cast metal ones that would be nicer than these moulded ones but I didn't do that. I used uh, some of my wife's hair bands just to keep everything together while it was drying. Um, these are braced on the inside, as I said, to, to keep the um, sides from bowing in together. Uh, and that worked pretty well. Uh, you just have to be very patient and wait for everything to dry properly by moving, before moving on to the next step. So in terms of painting, I used the technique which um, Mike Trice, I think, shows on his uh, YouTube channel which is to use Vallejo acrylics as a base and then you um, go over that with some um, dark brown oil paint and that works really well because it's quite cold at the moment it did take absolutely ages for the oil paint to dry but I've done it in the past and it didn't, didn't take as long so you just have to be again patient waiting for things to dry uh, but it gives a really nice effect so this was the the oil wash when it was still wet once it was dry that I started um, lining the beading um, and that was with enamel paint and um, again I used the um, the methods that um, Mike Trice shows on his um, his channel where he's obviously much better at this than I am um, and he shows really clearly and um, really well what, what to do here. I used a lining pen but you could probably use um, a thin paint marker or something like that I'm not sure. But the, I found the lining pen works really well for this because actually you can kind of set it to a, a width where the beading just kind of fits between the two blades and it just slides along. You don't even really need a ruler if you're careful. Although you can clean up any bits that go astray with white spirits and that's what I did. The, the lining was fairly straightforward and the main difficulty was where the, the beading had kind of worn away a little bit. You have to try and get the, um, the lining to go over those those gaps and try and um, get it to all, all match up and have con kind of consistent straight lines. But if you get it right, it does look um, a lot better and it kind of disguises some of the shortcomings in the 3D print. Once that was all done and dried, I varnished it again. Um, Originally I used um, Vallejo gloss varnish but I wouldn't advise using that because actually it seems to, to react badly with the um, the white spirit I was using for cleaning cleaning up. It seemed like uh, when I tried to clean things up or put washes on that were thinned with white spirit it made the um, Vallejo varnish kind of dissolve and come off so I'd use a, a different varnish rather than that one. 
I drilled some little holes and added some nickel silver wire for handrails and door handles and things like that. So yeah, that's fairly straightforward. That's just glued in with a bit of a, um, epoxy again. Uh, you could use super glue, but I seem to be allergic to it, so I use epoxy. And then once that was done, I um, gave everything a kind of a light weathering, just like a panel line wash with again um, some very thinned out oil paints. I painted the chassis. Uh, I changed the couplings from um, from the standard tension locks to the the hunt couplings that I use on all my teak coaches, and I painted the um, the roof and the end pieces as well. So, so yeah, you can see it's obviously not perfect. It's not as um, good as the the fancy sort of sixty seventy pound um, Hornby Gresleys, but this cost me I think about thirteen pounds maximum to put together. Obviously, I did. I had a lot of the bits kind of lying around, so I, if you were having to buy all the the wire and the paints and the the 3D printer resin and stuff like that, it would cost more. But because I had a lot of the stuff in stock, it was pretty cheap to make, and I think it does look good. It looks nice alongside the other coaches that I have. These close-ups don't necessarily do it any favors, but from a kind of normal viewing distance, I think it looks pretty decent. Um, I should also say I did I put in some um, some transparent acetate on the inside just for window glass, although it's not terribly apparent in the still pictures. So yeah, that's that's what I came up with. Um, this this will fit on a standard Hornby chassis. The files are all available to download from Thingiverse, so by all means use them, adapt them. Um, I'd rather you didn't sell them, but go ahead and make your own coaches if that would be something you wanted to do. They are decent enough, I think, at least for my purposes, and they are a lot cheaper than trying to buy um, one of the Hornby ones, particularly at the moment when they're not kind of available to buy new. Uh, okay, see you.